in rain. You brought us a long way this year. When we started January, we didn't see November. It was very far. It was so far. It was very far. We couldn't even see it, oh God. Thank you because you hide things from us. Because if we would see it, maybe we would have ran away or gotten discouraged. But Father, we are here today that even we are in November and we have not even finished the year. Yet when the year is finishing, when it's the end of a year, sometimes people get distracted. Some people get backwardness. Others begin to come long. Others become sad. Others begin to mourn. Others begin to cry. And they begin to say from January to now, I have not received money. I have not built my house.
to this nation. I pray for the soil of Kenya. And I demand from it to bring the best of me and the seed and the fruit for which I may bear and I must bear upon it. And to all those who are here, I pray the same for them. That no evil would the land give to them. No evil would the land give to them. No evil would the land give to them. Father, as the earth open its mouth and swallow the floods of waters that were trying to spill out of the mouth of the beast. And Lord God Almighty, I pray today that you will do the same for us. And the seal of peace and the seal of love and forgiveness be upon our nation today. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's do Psalm 97 and the Lord be glorified. Amen. I can't hear an amen. 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 Can turn off that music for now. Amen. I'm glad to see you all. Wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. I'm glad to see you all. I don't take it for granted. I thank God who has given you life and given you the strength, given you the energy, given you the good health, given you the joy, even the desire to be in his presence, and even much more than I can count. I pray that God will take it and bring higher blessings for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to be in the sanctuary of the Lord. It's called the assembly of the uprights and the congregation of the righteous. Praise the Lord. So we thank God that we are here today. Let's read together Psalm 97. We do together. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of isles be glad thereof. Let the multitudes of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are around. Sorry. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him. A fire goeth before him. And burneth up his enemies round about. And burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlighten the world. His lightnings enlighten the world. The earth so so and trembles and trembles. The hills melted like wax. The hills melted like wax. At the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people see his glory. And all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images. Confounded be all they that serve graven images. That boast themselves of idols. 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 That boast themselves of id
He preserved the soul of his saints. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous. Light is sown for the righteous. Give thanks. Oh, sorry. And gladness for the upright in heart. And gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Ye righteous. Ye righteous. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Give rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Ye righteous. Ye righteous. And give thanks. And give thanks. At the remembrance. At the remembrance. today in all holiness that he is. So as we start our service, we want to thank God for his holiness. Amen. Amen. We are sealed in holiness. Amen. Nothing else can seal us but the holiness of God. Yes. And so, worship them, come here.
name of Jesus. To where worshippers have idols, we break them and we call them to come down. We release your power, Jehovah God, to move on the earth and break all the idols of men and bring Christ Almighty to the highest standard, to the power, to the resurrection, to the glory, to the majesty of his risen life. We say it shall be known in the earth that Christ Jesus, the Lord of life, the Son of man, is the one and only true God, and there is no other God but him. Say amen. Amen. was how we are eating. And Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, take 
eat. This is my body. Amen. Amen. He took what? Bread. He broke it and gave it to them. And he said, Eat. This is my body. Praise the Lord. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Praise the Lord. Today we are doing our communion here. This is what the Lord told us to do. So we are walking in obedience. We are serving God in obedience. Not according to our standard, but according to the standard he gave us. Amen. Amen. In this, I want to thank God. And I want to say as Jesus Christ gave thanks for his body as he lifted up the bread. I lift up the bread in the name of Jesus Christ. And I lift it to the one eternal, to you who is eternal, even the Lord who commanded the disciples as you gave thanks and as you gave it to them, you were joyful that that was your body, you were joyful that even the cup was your blood, you gave thanks. And so we bring what we have here as a bread and the fruit of the vine before you eternal master and we want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are in the day that you did what you did on Mark 24, verse 22 to 26. We want to thank you for what you wanted for men that are on the earth to learn on that day when you did it. We want to thank you for divine revelation. We want to thank you for divine reality. We want to thank you for your divinity because it's in your secret of secrets that when those who come to you with a pure heart and they believe that this is what you say do, then when we do it, we will receive of the good of what you say. We ask you to pour it upon us. We ask you to pour it upon us. We ask you to release it upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In verse 27, Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Since Jesus already went through all this, we are standing with the blood of Jesus Christ, and we are commanding his power, the power that is in the blood, to scatter the enmity that is against him in the church, even where we stand today. The covenant of division, the covenant of hatred, the covenants that work unrighteousness, the covenants that go with cameras to try and see what others are doing, they will not be able to prevail. The offended ones will not be able to stand. And Father, we want to lift up a prayer of forgiveness from us in the name of Jesus. That any attractions of the enemy against us because of our sins and our iniquities, we ask you to forgive us. Can you open your mouth, repent your sin, tell God to forgive you your sin. If you're holding unforgiveness against somebody, and in your heart, unasemanga sita musamehe, alikukose anini, let me tell you, you have to forgive. Whether you know it or not, the minute you don't forgive, is the minute you will also not be forgiven. And when you don't forgive, let me tell you the truth, you will find yourself offending others. You will find yourself in more offenses than the ones you are refusing to forgive. So you want to be free and you want to be happy, you want to be joyful, forgive your offenders no matter what they did. It may be your mother that you don't know. It may be your father that you don't know. It may be your uncle that hated you. It may be your auntie that hated you. It may be your sister, your 
your brother, it may be your employer, it may be even the teachers in the school, it may be your neighbor, it may be that matter to driver, it may be people you met along the road. You may even be annoyed with our president, you may be annoyed with our nation. Please take away offenses from your soul. Do you want your nation to see good? Please leave the prayer of forgiveness to those who have done evil to our nation. Don't be angry, don't be mad, don't be sad. Speak forgiveness to them. Let no offense be in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, we bring our heart out of offenses by your standard, by your good, by the blood of Jesus. I ask you to enter deep. Father, release your spirit now. I ask you to release your spirit to every man, to every woman, even to the children. Let them understand forgiveness. Let the children even understand forgiveness. Let them forgive. Let them forgive. Let them forgive. Let them forgive.
and begin to be a person by yourself within yourself for the glory of God. Father, I thank you. I declare that you are the master of us all. You are the Lord of us all. Every prayer that every person is lifting to you for forgiveness, for removal of all the darkness that was within them, for the removal of the death covenants that are operated within them, for the removal of the hateful natures that were within their generations. Let it all be removed and be dismantled today. Let your name come higher above the names of the earth, above the names of men, above the names of anything that is named. For all names must come under the name of Jesus. So we lift up the name of Jesus to give us this communion today. And for the cup of blessing, I release this blood of Jesus Christ to be the eternal destiny for the hope of which we stand. And the Lord of peace and the Lord of glory be with us now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Let's sing this one song here. Can you put this song I surrender up?
your community and tell you, Lord, I want to thank you for your broken body and for your shed blood for me. As I come to partake, make me who I must be in you. Let me become and let me never be put backward. I come for an upliftment. I come for a new me. I come for a new me. A me that has never known me is who I come to become. And I thank you for sealing me in the secrets of your grace and favor. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you all to come here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live. into the likeness of who you are. 
I pray today that no one will remain the same again. I pray that this covenant, which is a new testament, be sealed in a new way in everybody's life, from the mental, from the mind, from the memory, from the thoughts, from the conscious, to the subconscious. Let it be absorbed by your spirit. Holy Spirit, come, because you are left for us to help us. So we call upon you to come and partake with us and be the one we are partaking with and forever you will be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Take the body. And take the blood. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I know it was a blood for me. For me, for me, for me. For me, for me, for me. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Jesus died and rose again. Jesus died and rose again. Jesus died and rose again. It's not just by our own strength. Praise the living God. So our 
our brother Emmanuel, you know definitely you can take the, 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 the number of the new people, the register, you have it there, so you will see that the visitor we have today, you know how we can go now. Now it's my humble duty, it just need us to stand as we welcome our mom, and the Lord will bless to see my name. Hallelujah. Let's make a joyful noise back up again. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for my son Sylvester. He's a man of a good kind. Amen. He's a delight of the Lord and delight for us in this sanctuary. You may be seated and the Lord God bless you so much. Amen. Wow, glory to God. I felt like I was away for one year. <laughs> oh, my God. And yet, the Lord is still here. You I want to thank God for how you people have run the ministry well. You have done well. I want to thank God for the sermons that were done. I listened to them live and I was very happy. Oh, I say, God, you've come a long way with this, this proclaimed revelation healing ministry. You've come a long way. You've raised people that are confident in you, people that trust you, people who know they function not because I'm around, but they're doing well because your kingdom is operating. So I want to thank God for every way you committed yourself to work. And I pray now you go even higher. Amen. Amen. I pray you go higher and higher. I want to thank God for the sermons that were given, the sermon of the Holy Spirit, one that it really touched me, and it is so good, you know, when you speak and you're remembering the Holy Spirit, His work and everything. That was so timely, because even on the second Sunday when we came, the, the message that was preached on do not fear, we could only not fear because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I thank God that even Pastor Evelyn stood here and mentioned about it. Amen. And can you give her a hand? Because for one special thing, for one special thing, she did a sermon, and I was, as I was listening, I was like, Lord, she needs to start a church somewhere. Or we say we need to start doing conferences. She needs to start gathering women together. And you know, I've been going to Tima once a week to strengthen her and to do, to do what God requires me to do, just so that she can be more empowered, because it's a high calling for you. So we'll, we'll see how we start getting women together. And why I'm saying that big clap to be given is because after she preached and preached, and I was like, wow. She says, my notes, were left in the matatu. She had no notes. She said she gave her son the, the book where she wrote all the message, but he left it in the vehicle they traveled in. Do you know, I, I cried. I said, Lord, what? This is what you did to Jeremiah. He gave a message, and that message was completely burnt. And then you took him again. He wrote the same message with no errors, nothing, and you wrote even more. I said, she's a Jeremiah of a kind. Because did you guys see that? Did you people see any error? Or she's trying to look to see what to speak? It's like the scriptures were just flown. And the Lord be glorified. God is so good. I want to thank God. Pastor Kashoka has done great works here. I've seen, I've come and found changes in the sanctuary that I'm not putting a fan here right now. The Lord empower you more. I love your heart of serving. And not only serving, I mean, you don't have to be seen. I know you're not even happy that I'm saying you've done that. Because he doesn't like to be known. But... <laughs> I, I must appreciate you, amen? I must appreciate you. Because you have a calling and a high one. And you continue teaching on the Holy Spirit because your empowerment on that is very high, amen? I 
able to thank God. Sylvester, you've done well. Max, you've done well. Pastor George, you've done well. And even if I did call you pastor, know you're great ministers of God. Amen. Those who have been here, I want to bless you. Isaac Punwa, my son, I just love you. Thank you for being here today. We are coming to Doldo life. Amen. We, we are coming to Doldo. The last time I came to Doldo, I did an unplanned crusade from about midday to 6 p.m. They didn't even want me to leave. When I landed there, one man, I think you can ask, there was a man who was called, was he Mwaneki? But you're from there, maybe you know him. He used to, he never used to talk. He used to be me. Yeah, and when we arrived there, he came to the car to greet me, and he was, he was not normal at all. And the Lord told me, come out, pray for him. And the man was restored completely. I took the towel that I had, for him to wipe his mouth because he has saliva. Those people who are abnormal, they talk and saliva is splitting everywhere on them, on you. And you know, I was trying to defend myself and it was still coming to me. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Lord, you've told me to. Okay, I was closing the window because I didn't want his saliva to come to me, but the Lord told me, get out and pray for him. I prayed for him and he became normal. That man didn't want me to go away. He held my hand and began to cry and told me, you must eat food in my house today. And he lives far near the mountains there, yeah? He lives a little far. I told him, no, we've come here for a walk. When people saw how that man was changed, they all gathered around me. And it was such an event. Praise the Lord. I haven't gone back to Doldo, but I keep planning to go. So, we'll plan. Amen. The Lord is so good. Greetings from Nigeria. Amen. Amen. From our daddy, Habija of the Last Covenant, Professor Archbishop Aiknathan Uzoma. He's a wonderful father. Greetings from him, his family, his team that works with him, the Committee of Lights. I mean, those people are powerful. Hey. Those people work. Those people are united. Those people know how to make a step and go. Praise the Lord. Those of you who have seen the videos, they know it's not a joke. Amen. When you begin to move, you move. Amen. It's not like, where are you? What? You know you're moving. Don't even look for anybody. You move. It's, you're supposed to move and do. Praise the Lord. I pray we partake of that. In the name of Jesus. Some of us look around like who is there, who is what, but praise the Lord. We must move. Amen. We must move. Move. Move and do. Move and glorify God. Move and walk. Amen. Don't look like who will think what who walk. That is who they are. Praise the Lord. They walk until I'm like, what time are you going to rest? When are you resting? They say, that is just how it is. They don't think about how they are going to sleep, when they are going to eat. I mean, there, there are times I will speak to my daddy Habita and he says, I have not even slept. He will stay awake for three nights without sleeping. Three nights, seriously. And then all of us are there, sending him prayer requests, prayer requests, prayer. Where? Pray for him. Amen. Yeah. Do you think he's empowered for you to keep saying I'm sending my prayer request when he's looking at it's 11 o'clock, let me sleep? No. Praise the Lord. So also sacrifice a day and give it to the Lord for him. That is my request, my humble request for you individually. I will not force it on you, but individually, Tell the Lord, I'm setting apart this day to pray for this great daddy that is introduced to the earth by you. And our mommy, our pastor Lucy Kabi. Now I'm Pastor Dr. Lucy Kabi. I was awarded an honorary, an honorary award in divinity 
for the work of God that I do. Most of the work is known in heaven. Most of it you don't even know. Like what I've spoken about, Dodo, you don't know. But we've done it. Amen. We've done many works. Praise the Lord. We don't need to advertise them. But because of what we have, the ministry that God has given me, God has awarded me. It was not an easy award. It was not just something you look at and it begins to be. It's not something you buy. Praise the Lord. It required a lot of attention and a lot of examinations. Amen. So the Lord has done it and the Lord is mighty. I don't boast about it because I am still the same me. Amen. And all I need to do is pay attention to what the Lord has done because when you are promoted in a title, you can't be called a CEO and you operate like a clerk. Amen. Is it true? Hello? Can you be a headmaster and you're behaving like a, a teacher who has just been employed? Praise the Lord. Can you be a president and you're still walking around like ordinary people? You cannot. So this promotion is to take a higher level, amen, of operations and existence and ways, amen. So when you see me, don't say, hey, Pastor Beku Anini. Just know it is where I have been lifted to, amen. And you are all engaged in it. It is not a troublesome one. It's one that you know that, oh, the CEO works like this, amen. The president works like this. So let's work together and we will see the joy of the Lord in us. And the greatest work that the Lord is laying for us to do is to win souls for the kingdom, amen. People are just laying everywhere, needing to be born again. Just the day I came, I went to Linky to see uh, a widow there. No, the day I came, I went to see one widow in a, uh, where? Ishuga, to Ishuga. It was so, <laughs> it was very good because we had fun. It's a woman that I have uh, loved, admired, and uh, uh, the, the greatest part of that history is that one day she was sick and she was under oxygen and uh, the grandson here called me and I ran to Cottage Hospital. She was breathing her last. I pleaded with God and the Lord healed her. She came back to life. Going back home, it was not easy for her to recover even body-wise, energy-wise. We began to work on her health, and uh, today she can walk on her feet. And when I went, she was lying down, and it touched my heart to see her sit up on her bed, you know? Like me, sometimes I look for some place to touch so that I sit up, and she just, sat up and I was being told she was saying, oh, that so me sit up. Now she knows I can sit up. So she understands what I have seen her go through. That is really wonderful. And I am so happy. So I was saying, the next day I went to Liki to see another widow. And uh, when I finished my assignment with her, I was coming out and there was a mad woman that mad woman was following me like mad. She followed me. Until now, this woman was like, I don't know what to do. She's crazy. She's against you, she's crazy. And I just looked at her. I spoke in tongues, and she began to go backward, going backward. And I was just pointing at her, and I was speaking in tongues. And she just faded away. Then I said, Lord, Look at this woman, and she's not a young woman. She's, if I would rate her age, it's not less than 60 years old. So I'm like, Lord, we, we have work to do, amen. We have work to do, we have work to do. So imagine if that woman is like that, what about her children? Look at how Nanyuki has so many children outside these days. They are begging, they are borrowing, they are doing whatever they want to do. 
There is a lot of evil. So, let's be diligent. Amen? Ama yo unapenda vile unawana watoto huku nje waki outside the supermarket they wait for you coming out so that they see what you have bought. They are begging food. If you're entering a restaurant, they are there. Yeah? Is that good? It's not good. And then they are taking gum. They are just... And most of them, you look, it's not even like they are dirty or they are coming from very oppressed place. They, they look clean. But they have been captured by the enemy to do evil. They delight in doing evil. We have to do something. Amen. I said here at one time how I was going to Shen supermarket and one of them was there. Okay, two of them were standing together and I just went and grabbed his uh, gum, the one he was sniffing. And he looked at me and as he looked at me, this other one came looking at me. I held this one that I snatched and I snatched that one and they, I entered the supermarket. When I entered the supermarket, I came out. I had bought for them food. They refused my food. And they said, we don't want your food. We want our gum. Give us back our gum. Can you imagine? And their children, they don't want food. We don't want your food. We want our gum. The ones who didn't know what had happened, the ones who had now joined up, are the ones who ate that food. And these others didn't want. And were following me to the, to the car. And so I call those border border guys telling them, you come because these boys, I don't know what they are going to do. And I drove this way, I drove that way, so that they could not even know where I was driving to. So I came to church and burnt everything here. We have a mission to do. Amen. Let's be compassionate. Let's be kind. Amen. I want to talk a short sermon today. Our time is gone about offering and sacrifice. When you hear offering and sacrifice, I know you think of money. Hey, you've already looked at your pocket, eh? Hey, offering. What did you see so far? There's a seat here, come. And you're our visitor. Eh? Look, you're a strong man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And make that your permanent seat, amen? Hallelujah. I did that smile in church every Sunday from you. Amen. I need that smile. The Lord who led your feet to come, the same God, make your feet come every Sunday. Because in this altar you will grow. You become the person God wants you to become. And you are a seeker of God. And you're seeking to know him and to find him. Let me tell you, he's yet to be known by you. But in a place of stability, you will gain him and you will know what he has planned for you. Your life will become better than it is. I'm not saying your life is bad, but for what you're seeking to see, it will become better. There's nothing good like a young man like you coming here. Amen. Look at my sons, look at them. They came the same way. They are growing. Amen. The Lord bless you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Sylvester, make a new friend. Max, make a new friend. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor George, note all of you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So when I talk of offering and sacrifice, don't think of money. Money, money, money. You know, God is beyond money. If God worked with us in the realms of money, we would not be able to work. Because we would be tired. We would be tired and we would be panting. You know, you know because the heart of man wants money. But he's showing you this is money. But to get there, what do you need to do? He will tell you. So you're going to punch. You're going to sweat. You're going to tell him how much you me because if we give me just that hundred, he'll tell you can't have it until you win a soul. 
Praise. And you're seeing it live. Seeing it live. Not like you are trying to do so that you don't even know where it will come from. Let me tell you. But God doesn't operate like that. God operates with love, loving kindness, mercies, and every aspect of him is filled with love. So, offering and sacrifice. When I say offering and sacrifice, I'm talking about Jesus Christ himself. Amen. He's an offering and he's a sacrifice of God to us. Amen. He's an offering and a sacrifice of God to man for us. He accepted to be an offering and to be a sacrifice. Glory to God. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Amen. There's something Jesus has done that needs to be identified by you in a very high way. In a very specific way and in a very divine way so that you can give him and continue to give him the highest honor, the highest regard, the highest respect. And in this, you will be transformed so that as it says, he gave himself as a sacrifice and as an offering to God. For what? Because of me and because of you. Because of a sinful man. Not a righteous man. Jesus said, I did die for the righteous. Amen. So were there righteous people on the earth when he died for him to say, I did die for the righteous? I like Pastor Kashoka examines and he asks questions. So he asked them, does it mean there were righteous people in the earth that time? So he says, I did die for the righteous. I died for the unrighteous. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. Praise the Lord. So he died for what? For the unrighteous. And the unrighteous is me and you who have to come to him and say, I bow down to you. I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. Have mercy upon me. I am a sinner. I have done this against your will. Change my heart. As my Lord and Savior. And the Bible says, those who trust in Him and those who believe in Him fully in their hearts, when they call upon Him, then He will come. In your heart, you believe God in Christ unto righteousness. And with the mouth, you confess Him to salvation. Then He becomes the same way, is the same way Jesus answer to the cry of the father. The father needed help. He needed to see somebody come to the earth and save mankind. Because man was destined to die in a bad way. Because the activities of Satan were being directed very high. The powers of darkness had gathered so much of evil so much evil from men, so much. From this one, they bank. From this one, they bank. From this one, they bank. The banking of evil was so much that when that was going to be released, this arm would not even be existing. So God began to plan. Somebody must go and die for the sinners. And every voice of the Supreme Father of the universe went all over. Angels were scared. Cherubim, seraphims, all of them in heaven were scared. They couldn't turn to come and die. But Jesus 
said, I will die. So he made himself what? A sacrifice and an offering for a sinful man like you and me. So that we may not die and go to hell. Because Satan had gathered every evil that every man will go out into the realms of darkness and be tormented there. Until today, that is the agenda of the fallen Lucifer and the fallen angels. That is the agenda. But you should not be in his agenda. You must not be. Amen. You must not be because you understand what you should be an offering and a sacrifice. With what? Great love in your heart. The first love you must give is to the one eternal God. Through Jesus Christ. Without releasing your heart to love Christ. You know what you love you speak about. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like when I went to buy this towel. I loved its color. And I took it. Praise the Lord. If I didn't love its color, I would not take it. Amen. You like what you are wearing is because you love it. Even if somebody put a kikulete a kitu mama, na na kwa biya na kupati a tu ni guo. Si kwa sa uta ya kali ya usa mehisi kala ya hu. Kuna kala yiki ne sinio. Uta kali ya tu ama uki chuo uta chuo. Ana chuo na kiti tapi ya mugi ne. Eh? Si ya hu. It does doesn't that happen? So when you love something, you want to possess it. What you love is what you want to keep for yourself. Because it's delighting your heart, it's rejoicing your heart. It's making you merry. It's making you feel joyful. It's giving you another place where you feel that God has attended to you and God has done. And you'll also go telling people, imagine I was given this by Pastor Lucy. Imagine I was given this by Pastor Kashoka. Well, imagine if Lee came from Timau and brought for me this. Seriously, you begin to talk. So when you pick Christ, the Lord of love, the Lord of life, the Lord of all creation, who agreed to die, to take you out of hell, you will begin to give yourself with the highest love to him. Highest love. You will not even look who has given him love, who has not given him love. All you care is that I give him love. Amen. You will not care, have I eaten or not eaten? You will give him love. You will not care, am I clothed or not clothed? You will give him love. Praise the Lord. The rich man and Lazarus is a very good example. Lazarus would not care whether he is disabled, whether he is whatever form he was in, but he was praising and praising God. Because after Lazarus died, would he be at the bosom of Abraham if he was not connected with the love of Christ? Would he be there? Would he be there? He would not be there, praise the Lord. Yet, the one who is a rich man, and is the one with a lot of food, and is the one who is even maybe he had a big stomach, we don't know. <laughs> yeah? We don't know. Eating lunch, we take, wake up in the morning, take breakfast, 10 o'clock, and I could look at China Commandasi, eh? Lunch time, and I end up Kule, you know, Zimba Pakiwa Kule, eh? Yamaya, a fish in a big one, it's fried, the other one is spiced, you know, the other one is this. He has selections of food, and he can eat anything. Yeah? And then he eats lunch by four o'clock. He can look and say, Oh, now I need maybe to take a small wine. He'll take like a wine in the evening. Of course, every food is there. He never misses food. Praise the Lord. And by, before he sleeps, maybe he'll take another small wine so he can sleep. <laughs> I'm wealthy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And if there's a man at his gate that he cannot take care of, don't look at people how they look. Praise the Lord. Don't look. If you read Psalm 
27, you will not desire people with money and their riches because you don't know where it came from. That's what Psalm 37 says. Don't fret. Which is too can you are okay. This is a rich man. Just respect them. But don't be shaken. Amen. And don't try to do anything so that you can get their money. Lazarus did nothing to have even then whatever was being thrown away. Praise the Lord. And that's why I'm saying we have to be very, very diligent to take care of people who don't have. People who don't have. People like those kids who are around there. Be diligent. You're entering supermarket and you're just passing them like this. If you have even 20 shillings, buy them like a small cake. Give that to one, they'll go and share. Next time do that, but don't look at them and begin to think how evil they are. They are there as a test for you. Did you hear me? Because you are supposed to be a living sacrifice for God as Christ. Be followers. Ye be there for followers of God as dear children. Not even the justice children. Dear, dear. Dear, ni ni ni. Ni mi nyamagani. Praise God. This is as a dear panted for the waters. As a dear panted for the waters of my soul. Long after thee. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. So you pant like a deer. Amen. When it runs, it pants. Amen. So you're panting to be that good offering for God. Amen. So, so you are a dear what? A dear child. And you walk in love even as Christ has loved us. Even as Christ. You think Christ loved us and you cannot be able to do the same? You can be able to do the same. Don't say it's Christ. Tell him as you did, enable me. He will give you the Holy Spirit to enable you. That's when you walk and he gives you that heart of compassion. That's when you are entering there. Don't say like some people will look at those women who sit there. They have babies and they are like, Oh, they can be able to go and get pregnant and they are bringing babies, babies. Why can't they go and work? I, I'll give and I begin to ask them, why are you seated here? Why can't you look for something to do? Praise the Lord. If you cannot even talk to them, buy for them something, even a bread. Have compassion. Amen. That is who Christ is. We are living as a what? A sacrifice to God. And if you don't live as a sacrifice to God, I'm making you understand what a sacrifice to God is. It's not about the money you bring here. That is a sacrifice. You bring it here, okay? And it's an offering. Very high. In serving God, the higher, higher, in giving love and compassion to that person. Because if you go to that person with a pure heart, you buy that one packet of milk to that and give to that boy. And you tell God, Father, I thank you for this milk. You've enabled me to buy it. I'm going to give it to those, those boys. As they drink it, let them experience your love. Do you know that prayer will come to a place and one day may change that boy. And say, the day that boy may get saved and say, there's a day a man came and gave me milk. From that day, I stopped. Yeah, okay, I will take and I will take it and try. And then I felt I don't want it. Then I begin, began to feel I need God. We are the ones to change people. Praise the Lord. Because love is a destroyer of evil. Love has a very severe sword, very tough, piercing sword. It pierces, and when it goes and hits, it just breaks. Because love cannot leave evil operating. 
And that's what Christ did. So what you do in love with a pure heart, it is going to strike and bring out the wicked nature out of man. And that man will begin to say, oh, now I want God. Now I want God. Now I want God. Now I want God. Do you want somebody to know and want God because you did them good? Be an offering. Amen. Be a sacrifice. Don't look at your pocket all the time and say, I don't have. In fact, there were people in a sanctuary or in a temple. And Jesus stood there in the temple and was watching them. And they all brought their offerings here. And finally Jesus said, you all brought your offerings. All of you. Yes, you put it here. But one person brought the best. In her human terms, it is very little. It is a coin. To the others, the rich men, it is 10,000 shillings. <clears throat> My VH is out there. <laughs> Buy for 
for them something. Give them. Give them. Share food with them. Maybe they won't even accept your food because you think you've put witchcraft. Because they are enemies. But a time will come when you begin to tell them, you know what? I have nothing against you. And God will cause them to fill your heart and fill your soul. This is a good message I'm bringing because of what I have experienced so far. Tuweke upendo wa mungu na nietu. Upendo hauna hasira. Upendo hauna matusi. Upendo hauna kujipenda. Amen. Upendo hauna. Today when I look at myself and I say, surely at my age and where I am, People who are much younger than me have houses. When I enter there, they what they have and what. I'm like, I don't have. What don't I have? I don't know. But I can't fail to do what I need to do for God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to be the best example of myself to me. So when I preach, people can see and know that I am an imitator of God. Even as Paul says, be a imitator of Christ as we are. Amen. Yeah, that's what we should be. So Christ, walk in love. Make sure you maintain love in your life. Love. Amen. Ukitamea hivi wata kusikia. Ah, mimi uwe mtu simpendi. Ah, simtaki. Begin to tell your mind, what are you saying? What? From me. Jesus, I repent it. Why I renounce it? Remove it from me. Before the enemy takes it and begins to use it against you. Be very quick to change that position. Why is the church of Jesus Christ suffering? Because of people who are fighting within congregations. People fight. Men fight each other. Women fight each other. Families fight each other. Congregations fight for their leader. Please never fight for me. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus said, nobody can be able to fight for him. Nobody. Hakuna. Nobody can go and tell somebody stop fighting. Amen. Even when who took a sword and cut the ear? Peter. What was he told? Hey. Why? Where's the Pikania? But you're taking a sword and cut his. You cut somebody's here because of me. Don't dare. I have a God who fights for me. Amen. I have a, I have a God who fights for me. And I have a God who will never forget that he's in battle for me. I have that God who does not sleep nor slumber. Praise the Lord. He's awake. And for you, he's awake. And for you, he's operating. Why? Because he's filled with love for you. So also fill your heart with such love for him. And when you feel your heart, your heart doesn't have enough love, just tell him, please, Lord, please shower me with love for you. Give me more love for you. Give, give it to me. And you will know that you're given more love for Christ. When you meet somebody in need and you're able to attend to them, that is one mark. Not because you went to the restaurant and you were able to eat. Mm -mm. Because you met a beggar and you helped them. Praise the Lord. It's true. Because you found a person in need and you helped them. And you helped them even when you didn't expect you were going to help them, number one. And then you helped them because you have that compassion. You saw that and just desire to help them. And you felt you didn't even do enough for them. And you seek to do better for them. That is who God is. Praise the Lord. That is who God is. That is who God is. I remember there is a widow that I told I, I'll be buying for her her gas when her gas gets finished. And I saw her calling me so many times. And I said, I know her gas is finished, but right now you don't have money. And do you know, when I went to her house 
later, actually, I went, I, I was away, I just came back. I went to see her. She's the one I went to see. And then she was telling me, I guess God finished. And I said, it, it got finished. Yes, it got finished. I just took, I have a card for that gas supply. Then the guy told me, the gas now is not uh, nine, uh, the last time we bought was 900. He told me now it's 1200. I said, 1200, it's okay, bring. She couldn't believe it. Because I promised to do for her. Amen. And let, the truth is, I didn't even have money. When I was going, I didn't go thinking that her gas is finished. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's carry the love of Christ. Just help one. You don't have to help everybody. But the person God brings your way like this, you'll be tested. Do you want God to remember you in the future? Be an offering, be a sacrifice. What did Christ do? when he became a true offering and a true sacrifice for God because of you and me that God may recover souls from death, from destruction into his kingdom Jesus was promised that he would what? inherit a higher glory than the one he had before he came down did that happen? it happened, amen did that happen? Yes. Did that happen? Yes. It happened. So, because God is also holding very great and precious promises for us. Great and precious what? Promises. Do you think he's a man to lie? The Bible says he's not a man to lie. So, trust in him and trust in him fully. Offer yourself to him daily as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, acceptable to him, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. That is acceptable. Giving yourself as a sacrifice, you're thinking, what kind of sacrifice? Number one, giving yourself as an instrument of love. That's number one sacrifice. Amen. Amen and an offering to him. Giving yourself to that divine love, you've already entered into the system of the divine love where when God speaks to you or when you are walking because you have a divine conscience, you'll be able to help somebody. Remember, a good Samaritan found a man who was fallen on the ground. And Jesus said, eh? what did Jesus say? A Levite, a high priest, they walked. They said, eh? I, I don't have money. I cannot manage him. Eh? This guy is very wounded. I can't manage him. But one man who was called a good Samaritan, Good Samaritan because he was a Samaritan. He saw the guy. He looked at the time. Oh, my journey is long, but I have to help this guy. He took oil. He, he put it on that guy. He did other divine touch that he did. Took him, put him on his animal. It must have been maybe a donkey or a horse, I don't know. And then took him to a hotel or wherever, somebody's home or whatever. And then he said, please keep this man. I'm going on a journey when I come back. Whatever money you spend on him, I will pay back. Is that easy? Would you first sit and begin to count? You would have asked them, okay, I hope to come back at November 30. So every day, how much do you charge here? <laughs> What would you do, Sylvester? Say, uh, today is November 6th, eh? eh? So tomorrow, how much do you charge per night? How much is breakfast? How much is dinner? I think you can do without breakfast, or is it dinner? Uh, 
You sell water. How much? I, I think let me take it back to the road because I don't know what to do. Even the, the beginning of helping him will not work. In the kingdom of God, you are still zero. So, believe me, when you walk in that divine love, you meet people, you help them. Because your heart is compassionate. Not because you want to show or you want to be known, but because it is an assignment of God within you. You don't even know it's an assignment. It is the heart of God in you. You are building a kingdom of God for other people and building greater heights for yourself. In the place where when you, before you cry, you find somebody has applied for you. Before you begin to say, God, I did this and no food. He has already sent food to you. That is who God is. So offer yourself as an offering and a sacrifice for him. He says it's acceptable in uh, Romans chapter, chapter, chapter 12. Isn't it? You know Romans chapter 12? It says it's a, it's a living sacrifice. It says it's a living sacrifice. It's not a dead sacrifice. Amen. Can we read it together? Loudly. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Your body. Can you work without your body? You are nothing without your body. So with your body, you are enabled to do. So a living is that which is not dead. Amen. What that scripture there? So as I speak, they look and see living. Yeah? So, living, not dead. So when you are not presenting yourself to God as a living sacrifice, and what makes it recognized as living is because of love. Love is what is living. Amen. Without love is death because hatred is death. Amen. When Lucifer hated the supreme divine God, the creator of all, he died. Amen. When man believed in the voice of Lucifer that eat of the fruit of the good and evil, and they had been told the day you eat it, you will die, what happened? They died. Did they die physically? No. But they died what? Spiritually. So love is a spiritual realm of life. Are you hearing me? Love is the spiritual realm of life. Without love, there is no life. Life is because of love. Love is a pillar of life. Even people today who are in hatred, what happens to them? You begin to see them getting confused, getting tired, getting angry, getting mad, fighting, stabbing. What are they? They're dead. But people with love, they give the good. They make others rejoice. They make others happy. That's what Christ says. And that's what he came to do for us. Can you become one? Say yes. yes. Will I become one? Say yes. 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 Will I remain one? Say yes. yes. Can I maintain it? Say yes. 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 And that's you. Because that's what God wants us to be. And without understanding that, you will not be able to serve God. You will not be able to give to God. You will count yourself before when you have your money. You will say, hey, hey, hey. You know last month I didn't have money. So even this time, I cannot pay to this man. God understands. Understands what? God understands what? Seriously. What can God understand? Let me give you.
your scripture and you know God doesn't understand it. Amen. Uh, Psalm 116 verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What shall I render unto God for all his benefits? Look at this scripture. He look that God has done nothing for me. God has done nothing for me. Did he look at God in a negative way? And how many times do we sit and look at God in a negative way? Oh, this money is not enough. My rent is like this. Oh, the government has increased this. What, what, what? Do you know, even our government, the, the problems we are having is because believers have not strengthened themselves to the realm of that love where they give and serve divine to salvage our nation from what it is. The seed of love you give to one person has the power to multiply and to become something good and better in another person. So if you don't, there is nothing to multiply. Praise the Lord. So what shall I render unto the Lord here for all, all his benefits? You look at the benefits of God. Do you think God has not benefited you? Actually, because you don't have a job. Eh? You change one shirt every night and clean it and wear it the next morning. You know God doesn't look at that. Do you know God does not look at that? Praise the Lord. God is in charge of clothing you. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned, they took leaves to try and clothe themselves. And God of love looked and said, how long will they be looking for leaves? They put leaves by evening they are dry. Tomorrow they look for leaves and I'm the one who maintains the trees. They don't even, these trees have fallen into the same standard where they have fallen. So let me kill an animal. And then call them, come, come, come Adam. I still love you. Even, even if I've made a judgment against you, <laughs> please put on leather clothing. Leather, leather. <laughs> they were given leather. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They were given, is it easy to destroy leather? Leather in a kufanga. God clothed them with leather. Eh? Told them, you know what? You don't have to be climbing trees looking for leaves and looking for threads to sew them or glue or whatever. I have clothed you with leather. I want to show you I still love you. That's who our God is. Amen. If you look at God deeply, you will offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Holy, pleasing, and acceptable to him. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. It's asking a question. Do you despise the riches and the goodness and the forbearance and the suffering, not knowing the goodness of God? Lead them you to repentance. There is a goodness of God that must bring you to a place where when you don't do what he told you to do, you must repent. Amen. People who don't repent have not connected with the goodness of God. So he's asking, do you despise or despise thou the riches of his goodness? Because the goodness of God is rich. And it's not only rich, it has riches. Amen. So when you experience it, it's not in one dimension, it's in many dimensions. Amen. When you think you are going to eat, he tells you, no, it's not time to eat, it's time to get a wife. And you're like, I didn't even know. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you think, that somebody is against you, you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you, saying, that's the person who loves you most. Those are riches of God. Amen. When you hear this person, this is to be this, the time they must pay me, you hear God telling you, 
I will pay you. Have peace. The riches of God. And he says, his riches of his goodness, his forbearance. Meaning God has the, the fruit of the spirit that we are supposed to have. God possesses it. Forbearance. He looks at you and already he has decided, I will take you slowly and quietly. <laughs> Even God looks. <laughs> you don't know me. I'm forbearing. Uh -huh. Okay, now speak. Now do. Now act. Uh -huh. Yes. I'll meet with you there. Then you will know I am God. That's what, how he dealt with Israel. Israel, prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. Prepare. Yani, me and God, you can't change me. There is nothing we can do to make God happy. Even worshipping and everything. But we can only take ourselves to him humbly so that whoever he is, in his nature, his might, his reality, he will pour it down to us and water us. That's why we worship. And worship in spirit and truth. Where we connect with where the streams will flow to us. But not actually, God is in heaven jumping. They're saying, hey, down the mountain, up the mountain. Eh? You think he's also dancing like that? No. He wants to see the heart that is seen that down the mountain, on the valleys, the Lord is my portion. Whether you, you're, you're going through hardships, you go solo until you don't know what to do. You're pushed against the wall. Lord, you are my portion. I have nowhere to turn to. You are singing to him. He begins to pour down that which is going to rescue you. That which is going to salvage you. That is which is going to lift you up, to bring you joy. To remove sicknesses, diseases, infirmities. To remove hatred. To remove rejection. To unite you back to him. To make you love your mother who you thought didn't love you. Like me, I grew up knowing my mother didn't love me. I knew my mother did love and did love me. I grew up like that. Until the day I was going to Form 5. And she was the one to take a train with me and take me to Mombasa because I was going to Mombasa High, in that Coast Girls High School. And when we were in the train, the one you climb, you, you enter at 8 p.m. I was feeling, now will I go with my mother the whole night in this train? Me alone, because other times we'll be with my siblings, but now I'm with her. And I didn't even know what to talk to her. My mother turned to me, she removed a watch, and told me, I'm giving you a watch. I said, Ma, a watch? She said, yes. I said, this watch is very expensive, because I knew the watch. The watch had been bought by my dad for her in Switzerland. A very expensive Swiss watch. She put it on my hand and told me I have given it to you. From that day, I knew my mother loved me. And I began to respect her. And that was, and two years after that, she passed away. And that watch was stolen at a time we were hijacked by, by guys who put, they put nails on the road. So the car we were using, the tires burst. So they came, took us out. We were put in the bush. We were told, remove everything you have. I was wearing that watch. That's how I lost it. I cried. I lost my best watch from my mother who was now dead. I lost it in 1990. Hmm? Let me tell you, from 1981 to 1990, praise the Lord. So love, you have to show love to somebody who you think doesn't love you. Give the best, my mother gave me her best. That would not make me deny that she loves me. 
I couldn't deny. I saw her love and I accepted it, and yet I was not born again. I was not saved. It touched me and knew she loves me. So when we are born again, what should we do? Give the best. Do the best. Amen. 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 It may not be financial, it may not be material, but even the actions you do for somebody, it will do great things. Amen. Amen. So in this, I want to say Psalm 107, verse 8. As we conclude our sermon today, I want to seal you into this dear love. Amen. So you'll be panting for it daily as a dear panted for the water. As dear children, amen. I'm speaking to you as dear children. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his, for his wonderful works to the children of men. So you think God has not done wonderful works for you? You think he hasn't done wonderful works for you? Can you declare, Lord, you have done wonderful works for me. Lord, you have done wonderful works for me. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Wonderful that I cannot even be able to number or to fathom how wonderful it is. Too wonderful. All oh, that man. It's a cry. It's a psalmist cry. All oh, that man. Many men are in a place that they don't come to praise and to see the wonderful works of God. Praise his wonderful works. When you wake up, say, I praise you, Lord, that I am up today. Praise the Lord. Give praise. When you imagine, maybe you would have been called, imagine so and so have a kufa. Those are the, the phone calls these days, isn't it? If you never receive that call, somebody is dead, lift up your hands and say, Lord, I thank you on my life. And I'm hearing everything good. Even when you hear somebody is dead, just praise the Lord. What of works of God to the children of men? So when we see what is happening, we won't say that God has neglected the earth. No. On Friday, I, I met a lady with a problem and a problem of a problem. She tried to question me about God. And yet she's telling me, people say, I am a child of Jesus because of the way I love God. Then I say, they say that and you're asking me such questions. You're telling me people say you are a child of Jesus. She's, she's saying, that's why I'm asking you because right now, I don't even have a job. She was done this vaccine the corona, she got very sick, she almost died, only to be checked, her blood sugar had shot her, now she's trying to control, control blood sugar, the job she was in, she had just been removed because she was working for a wicked man, that man had an investment company where people come and invest and people get money from the investment, but now he began to divert like this, but I don't know, this big cars for himself, what, what? And then he told them, I'm closing this business. No more investments, we're not giving any more money. And they were all thrown out, nobody was left there. A man who is known to be an investor, she was one of the workers. She asked me now, why is it like that? Hmm. I would say, oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. We must connect with the love of God. Anybody walking with a mind that God has 
not done, we will never receive anything from God. True. If you walk with the mind, God has not done for me. Don't expect anything from him. Wake up, have the breath, live ordinary, and don't expect anything more. If you don't live in that place where you know God loves and cares for you, you are in trouble. But I pray that none of you here be found in such a state. Amen? Amen. And if such states have operated in you because of the body and the blood of Jesus we have taken, I pray for your salvaging today. And I pray for my voice to have the reality of power and authority to rescue you. You must come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. To do it what Giza. How can you look at the one who gives you bread and say, where are you? You haven't done for me. And yet your ear can hear. Yet your eyes can see. Yet you are using his breath to talk. Aye. We cannot be foolish. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 25 3. The heaven for the heights and the earth for the depth. And the hearts of kings is unsearchable. The way the heaven is so high and the earth is known for its depth is the same way you cannot find out God. So let's not try to do it. Amen. Let us offer ourselves to him in the power of his love. Amen. In the covenant of his love, Psalm 25, 3. In the agreement of his love. He said it's a new testament. The new testament. In the new testament, when Jesus said that this is a new testament, he said, a new commandment I give unto you. Love. You remain a perfect offering and a sacrifice to God. So when you give yourself an offering, you know an offering is a deposit, eh? Senior, send the deposit. It's deposited in your spiritual bank. Sacrifice is deposited in your spiritual bank. So you won't have any time to cry because the Spirit of God is working with you and He can see, oh, this one now needs His help. So remembrance is put upon you. So even before you cry, God has already come. Let us learn how to walk like that. And why I'm speaking this message is because the year is ending. We need to recover where we have lost from January to where we are. Where we have lost even before January, even before generations. Let's recover ourselves. Amen. Let's give ourselves to prayers. This week... Let's give ourselves to prayers as an offering, as a sacrifice of great love to God. Amen. Mama, to Najibia na wiki hi, kuwa yo nini tapi hu ya mungu, eh? Ya upendo kwa mungu. Sisi si watu wa kuishi, ati mungu tu tupe tupe, tu kwa watu wa kuishi, ata sisi tujitoe kwa ke, na tusaidia wangine na tujipeane. Na sio watu wa makelele ni upendo wa Mungu. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us stand up. Father, I come and I ask you to raise a standard now. I ask you to lift every person who is here today.
to the realm of being a loving sacrifice and an offering to you, even as Christ did, we shall deal no more with ourselves as in our troubles, in our problems, but we shall come to you always as a living sacrifice so that we may say that we are praising you for your goodness and for works to the children of men. For all the benefits you have given to us, we want to say thank you. From all our generations, backward, even from the fall of Adam, to where God, you know that we exist and sin was very evil against us. We come to say that we come to command your power to be upon us so that we be who we must become. You said God and God in humility, we command in the name of Jesus that the power of love, the power of love, the seed of love, the seed that is a true offering and a sacrifice to you as God may be planted in us holy, fully, purely, consecrated in you in Jesus' name. Let it never be forgotten today for what you have spoken. I ask you to put a mighty remembrance of this sermon in the heart of everybody. When they walk, when they turn, when they sleep, when they eat, when they awake. This sermon, my father, let it multiply the love of love within them. That Jesus Christ, they will know today that whatever they do, they will not be rejected if they do it in the true love of your love. For all the examples you gave in your word. Let them be forgiven where they did do the good things. Father, reverse them. Reverse them today. Reverse them. I got the reversal of all your lives wherever you are turned in different directions. I got the reversal of your souls from destruction, from evil, from darkness, from sin, from oppression, from depression. In the name 
name of Jesus Christ. And the peace of God be with us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord is here. The Lord is triumphing in grace and favor for each one of us here. There is no stone that will be left unturned because Jesus is working to bring love to everybody. And I want to speak blessings to you all through the authority of Christ. What you experienced before, you'll never experience again. I say it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord who creates his testimonies in heaven, create testimonies for, for himself. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, may you prepare your tithe, your, tithe, your offering, and your sacrifices. Bring them here before God because they are already preached for and they are accepted by the Lord of hosts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much. We thank you, Father. We become your followers forever and ever. We raise the tithe, the commandments that you have raised in the earth, that you have commanded all men upon the earth to tithe. Those who bring their tithe, I speak blessings. From you alone, who commanded the tithe, the reason you commanded, and the blessing for which you commanded, let it come to the tiger.